We're widening access to space travel. That's right. That means you, right there, at home, could become an astronaut in the not so distant future. So when you're up there experiencing zero gravity, you're gonna to need to know what effects that has on the human body. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you about that and what Bezos and Branson would have experienced in their very short time of weightlessness. If you don't know who I am, my name is Seramed and I make videos about health. If that fuels your ship, then hit the subscribe button so you can stay informed. And before we dive into the video, tell me, do you think humanity should be a multi-planetary species? Many people do, many people don't. If you comment below, I'll give you my opinion and respond as soon as I can. So the first thing that Bezos and Branson would need to do is obviously prepare. There have been months, even years of this. And I know Branson had started his company back in the 2001 year, which is madness. You, that's a culmination of 20 years of work on this project. And that's probably why even though he's only got a 7 billion fortune, I say only, only 7 billion. Well, compared to Bezos' 200 billion fortune, he actually managed to make it into space first before Bezos did. So they prepare, they get on the ship, and then they lay down horizontally. Why? Because when the thrusters go up, they're gonna experience three times the force of gravity. So for me, that would be three average sized people sitting on my chest. If you've ever been in a rug rugby scrum or on a pylon with some of your friends, you know that having a few minutes of that uh, would not be a very comfortable experience. But at the end, there is a light, and that is that once the thrusters go off, you get silence and zero gravity and you experience weightlessness. So it's really big contrast, which makes the weightlessness feel even more surreal. So at that point, a few things will happen to the human body since we are, have evolved and grown knowing which way is down and which way is up, but that's not the case anymore. So the systems all get thrown into haywire. I'm gonna go from top to bottom and explain how they go. So first up, I mean, which is higher, the eyes or the ears? Let's say the eyes are higher. So up there in space, you actually have a 10 times dose of radiation compared to what you experience on Earth. That's because you don't have the protection of the, the surrounding uh, block out some of the radiation. What does that mean? That means that when your eyes shut, you, will be able to see little bolts, almost look like lightning bolts, because the radiation is displacing photons into your eyes and making it appear as though there's light when there isn't. The other thing is that over a long period of time in space, the eyeball can actually change size because it doesn't have the effect of gravity and it can cause it to become much shorter. And that basically would, would make it so that you'd be long-sighted or hypermetropic. Now for Bezos and Branson, that wouldn't be so much of an issue because they were only there for a few minutes. The other things that can happen is when the fluid rises, it can also cause the vision to become blurry, which we'll talk a little bit more about later on. So next on our list is the ears or the balance system, which is located inside the ears. Now in zero gravity, the balance system can't function properly and it makes the body think as though it's still all the time, even when it's moving. So your arm could be moving, but your messages to the brain are saying that you're still and those conflict and they cause you to feel nauseous. So astronauts, always take anti-sickness medication before going up into space because the last thing you want to be doing when you're experiencing three or four minutes of weightlessness is trying to stop yourself being sick on your co-pilots. The next thing on our list is the heart. Now the heart usually has to work really hard to overcome gravity and be able to pump blood up into the head. And it has a really effective system of vasoconstriction and increasing contractility to be able to do that. A lot of the body systems are adaptive and so when you strain them, they actually start to work better. And when you take off the strain, then they start to weaken. And that's exactly what happens with the heart. It's more 
related to people who have long-term space travel in space, you know, for about 180 days, the heart actually gets weaker. And when they come back down onto Earth, they can, they can get dizzy because it, the body loses its ability to recalibrate and fire that blood up against the force of gravity. So not so relevant for Bezos and Branson. The next one, which would be relevant, is fluid shifts. So again, the, the gravity pulls the fluid down into the bottom of the body. But when that gravity is released, then it tells your body's mechanisms, especially the ones in the kidneys, that you are overloaded. And it starts to want you to produce urine, which is inconvenient in a spacesuit. So that then reduces the amount of blood volume you have, and it also overloads the head. And sometimes when you look at astronauts, they look as, it, as though they're quite flushed. Um, and also the increased fluid can put pressure on the back of the eyes and cause the vision to become blurred and not function so well. The next effect are on our musculoskeletal system. Your body's constantly compressed when you're in Earth by the effects of gravity. And so when you're up there in weightlessness, it actually expands and you become taller. They say you can grow up to two inches over a year. Sadly, for anyone wanting to take advantage of that, you lose that height in about a day after being on the Earth. So not a permanent fix, sorry. Similar to the heart, because the muscles are not having to work against gravity, they do become weaker over time. And there are a few things that people are doing to try and combat this. First obvious one is to exercise when you're in space. Uh, the second one is an elastic suit, which mimics the forces of gravity that you have to work against whenever you're moving up there in space, uh, which you can see in this video by a research researcher at King's College in London. Uh, skin tight suits that provides elastic resistance. So each one of these bands is essentially um, a function of, of elastic. So if I pull them down, you'll see that they, they become flush. And the theory is that if somebody who is exposed to a, uh, a very small amount of gravity wears it, then they will have some kind of resistance that they can push against or work against. One of the really unexpected changes of space travel is with our DNA. So how did we find that out? We had twin brothers experiment. One of them, Scott Kelly, one of them, Mark Kelly. Now Scott went up into space for a year and Mark stayed on Earth. And then when Scott came back, they compared their DNA to check and see what the difference is. They thought that Scott would have some accelerated aging. But they were quite surprised to see that he his telomeres, which as long as they are, show you how long someone usually has to live. What, and, and Scott's were actually longer than Mark's. Usually that would mean that he now has longer to live. But some cancers also lengthen the telomeres because they stop the body from shutting itself off and lead to unregulated growth. So it's still not quite clear whether it's a beneficial effect or potentially a harmful one indeed and especially with the increased radiation people are leaning more towards thinking it could be a harmful effect so the main ones of those that would affect bezos and branson would be you know the the radiation the effect on the eyes obviously the g-force and the fluid shifts and changes in balance uh, that they saw when they're out there so if you're hoping to get closer to space than the bar on your keyboard i hope this has been an educational video for you. If it has, drop me a like and share it with your friends. It would be much appreciated. And comment below, what did you learn? And I will see you in the next video in a week's time. Take care, best of luck.